Hello all, welcome to part 43 of TestNG training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to use expected exceptions attribute in TestNG. So let's get started. Expected exceptions attribute is one of the attribute in TestNG which can be used with at the rate test annotation. Okay, and the purpose of using this particular attribute in test ng is for performing the negative testing to check whether we are getting a particular exception or not. When you run a piece of code, are you getting the exception that you are expecting to come? It's a reverse way, guys. Okay, we generally don't want the exceptions to occur, right? We generally handle the exceptions, but here the case is reverse. Here you are thinking in a negative way where when you run a piece of code, you are expecting an exception. If the exception doesn't come, then you are failing the test reverse way. Okay, that is expected exceptions. But does the software testers really use this expected exceptions in real time for test automation? The answer is simply no guys. Okay, it's not really used for test automation purpose, but developers may use it guys. Okay, developers may use it. But still we have to learn in the interview point of view because uh, in the interviews they may ask you this question. What is expected exceptions? Okay. You, may, you should be in a position to answer. You should have this knowledge and should be able to answer this. Okay. Though we don't use in real time. You can mention that also. We don't generally use this in real time. All this stuff. Then you can explain your knowledge. You can showcase your knowledge there. Okay. But developers will use this guys. Okay. You see when building an application. The functionality. Let's say if you are. Let's say there is a field like a email address field. If you are providing a valid email address. You will not get an exception. But. If you're intentionally providing an invalid email address into the email address field uh, where at the rate symbol is missing or some dot com is missing, what will happen? You will immediately get a warning message kind of thing on the UI. Similarly, the code is actually giving you an exception there. Now developers want to check that piece of code by giving an invalid input that exception is being raised or not. Such practical purpose you think in the terms of developer guys, this will be useful. Okay, in terms of unit testing, developers may use this expected exceptions attribute to check whether when a user enters invalid input to the code, whether the code is raising the exception or not. In that case, it is valid only, right? Valid scenario only it looks like, but in test automation, we generally don't use it, guys. That's the only thing, okay? So this is how we have to use, guys, uh, with at the rate test annotation. The circular brackets, expected exceptions is called. You can provide any number of exceptions, okay, that you are expecting, okay? All these exceptions should come, guys, then only these uh, tests will pass, otherwise the test will fail. Okay, I'll practically demonstrate this for you. Anyhow, just come back here. So here, guys, uh, I'll just move this driver dot quit into one of the like a uh, after method kind of okay annotation annotate method public void public void uh, tear down. No matter whether test will pass or fail, this driver dot quit should be executed. Okay, whether the exception come doesn't come doesn't matter. The browser has to quit. So here I'll say. At the rate, at the rate uh, after method. This particular method will run after the test method. Okay, and here the driver is not global, so I have to make it global first. And I have to remove the declaration from the local method. It is all good. Okay, so now beside this test method, I'll write something like this: expected exception is equal to provide the curly braces and you can provide the list of exceptions that you are expecting from this code. But for now, I'll write only one exception guys. Uh, let's say I'm expecting from this code a no such element exception. No such element exception from selenium I'm expecting for the mouse uh, say dot class. Otherwise you have to specify dot class guys. Otherwise it is not going to work for the mouse and uh, now import this from here Java dot util is coming. Selenium is coming select selenium guys. Okay. So this is selenium code. So you should uh, expect the exception also from selenium. But here in this case, this code is not going to give you an exception because there is uh, this this particular element is a valid element. Okay, there is a text area field having this TA one as the ID in this application URL. There is a text area field having the ID of that uh, the ID of the text area field is TA one. So it will locate the element properly, and because of locating the element, it will not this particular code will not throw any no such element exception and uh, so, but 
what do you think the test will fail or pass in this case you are expecting an exception known as no such element exception but the code is not giving you an exception in this case the test will pass or fail test will fail guys okay we'll see that happening no matter whether the test will pass or fail the driver will quit that's why we moved into the after method run this code guys the code will not give you any exception but you are expecting an exception using this attribute since exception is not coming this particular test method is going to fail not going to pass see that respect of this the browser will close and uh, fail is coming you see the sample test got failed what was the reason for failure it was expecting an exception test exception okay so it is expecting to get an exception but of type no such element but it has not happened what if i i just modify this code like one two three here this particular id i modified it intentionally so that there is no element on this uh, website having this particular id as ta one two three so no such element exception will come here since no such element exception will be thrown by this code since the met uh, test method is also expecting the no such element exception since it is expecting and it's coming the test is going to pass surprisingly right this is how it works click on the run button you will see that this element this line 30 will give no such element exception and we are also expecting no such element exception since we are expecting and it's happening the test is going to pass the test is going to pass as you can see pass is called one sample test got passed because the exception has been thrown whatever we are expecting has happened that's why the test got passed this is how uh, crazy it is uh, to work with expected exceptions but we generally don't use it in real time guys okay that's what you have to know so hope guys you understood how to use this expected exceptions attribute but we generally don't use in real time but interview purpose or interview point of view you should have the knowledge of explaining what exactly this expected exceptions attribute is even though you don't generally use in real time so that's all for this session in the next session i'm going to cover another test engine topic for you till then see you bye bye